Desigualdade é que nem colesterol. Tem a desigualdade boa e tem a desigualdade ruim. Como assim? Quer entender melhor essa ideia? Então assiste o livro de notícias de hoje, porque quem vai explicar esse tema é uma das maiores pensadoras do liberalismo na atualidade em qualquer parte do mundo, a americana Deidre McCloskey. Ela esteve no Brasil recentemente e nós tivemos o privilégio de conversar com ela. Estivemos ao longo de uma grande parte da tarde com ela, gravamos uma excelente entrevista que a gente está publicando essa semana como uma série especial em capítulos. Para quem ainda não conhece, Deidre McCloskey que foi professora por muitos anos na Universidade de Chicago, depois em Illinois, ganhou diversos prêmios, entre eles o Hayek Life Achievement Award do Instituto Hayek de Viena, ou seja, o Instituto Hayek original austríaco, como reconhecimento por suas contribuições ao liberalismo ao longo da sua vida. Deidre é autora de diversos livros que ganharam diversos prêmios ao redor do mundo, mas que, infelizmente, ainda não estão traduzidos para o português, não tem edição publicada no Brasil. Por isso mesmo, é um grande privilégio, uma grande oportunidade para a gente poder ter conversado com ela e trazer esse conteúdo em primeira mão para o público brasileiro. Então, a gente está bem feliz com isso, espero que você goste. E vamos conferir agora a segunda parte dessa entrevista. Mas antes... Nos ajude a fazer esse vídeo chegar a mais pessoas, compartilhe com seus amigos, deixe o seu like. É bem importante para o algoritmo do YouTube aumentar o nosso alcance. E já faz também a inscrição aqui no canal e ativa o sininho para não perder as notificações. Até sexta-feira vão ter outros episódios, mas independentemente disso, toda semana, de segunda a sexta, o Livre de Notícia traz para você os principais destaques do dia para quem defende a liberdade por inteiro. Um, I want to bring up another sort of uh, polemical topic inside the liberal world, yeah. which is the theme of inequality. Yeah. You, you have claimed that there is good and bad inequality. There is. Would you care to, to explain us the difference yes, between both? Yes, of course. The, the, the bad inequality is stealing from people or getting the state to steal from some other one person. So I, I get the state to tax you to give me money. Cool. I'm better off. You're worse off. That's no good. But some people become rich and they be, so there's a certain amount of inequality because they're very good at football or very good at singing or very good at grocery stores or very good at whatever they're good at. And then all those deals are voluntary. If I want to, you know, we all, everyone in the world knows about Pele. He's the only soccer player anyone knows about is Pele. And Pele was very good at what he did. And many, many Brazilians and other people were willing to pay him money so that I can watch him. What's the problem here? Pele ends up rich. I've paid a few dollars to see him. That inequality is the is 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 fine is is good because it it uh, it directs investment towards the best providers of goods and services individually or corporately it you look there there's this all this foolish talk about google being a monopoly no it's not a monopoly it's good at its job and people do it voluntarily and people be forget that at the beginning there were a lot of comp competition to Google and they have sort of outlived them all. Absolutely. And, and they, look, it's like biological evolution. The economy is not like a machine. Our friend, my, my many friends who are socialist, I was a socialist once, believe that the economy is a, a machine and you press this lever and boom, out comes that. And our Many of our conservative friends believe that too. Wrong. The economy is like biological evolution. Look, the average life of a, of a startup in the United States is five years. In five years, it's gone. Most of them. And 
but just as in biology. Most of the uh, um, uh, variations are wrong, are not good for the children and the grandchildren, the great-grandchildren of, of the organism, whether it's a tree or a person. But if you don't have pe trees and people and monkeys and fishes trying out stuff, you don't get evolution. You, you, you don't get uh, improvement. Uh, um, and that's true in the economy too. So it's crucial that we not stop evolution. And that means leaving people alone. I have a book, um, this is my last book, but I'm going to, uh, next fall, uh, a book comes out with a co-author called, here's the title, Leave Me Alone and I'll Make You Rich. And that's, that's the basic idea. Leave me alone, I'll compete with other people, and the result will be evolution in the economy and we'll, we'll get better off. And the key point is that the poorest people are the beneficiaries of this. It's not true that the rich get richer and the poor get poorer. It's fun to say that and to claim it, but it's not true. If the rich person is rich because she did something very clever, really good kind of food or wonderful housing or something, that makes everyone better off. Um, I want to jump on to the next theme, which is more political. Um, when we talk about liberty, there's always the connection, the immediate connection between liberty and democracy. Yes, there is. Um, my point is, is democracy uh, enough? Are our countries free and then they will become prosperous if they're democracies by them? All alone, or are there most factors that are needed so that countries become more prosperous and more wealthy? No, what you need is I'm a Democrat, small d, I believe in democracy, but you need liberalism with democracy. And the reason you do is that the democratic principle is to give dignity to ordinary people, and the liberal principle is to give autonomy to ordinary people. But autonomy means leave me alone. Democracy means honor me with a vote. And you put those together and you get a good society. It's a society, and it's very new. It's a, as I said before, it's a very new idea. This only came to European minds in the, in the 1700s and now it's spread to the world. Um, and it's a crazy idea from the point of view of a traditional agricultural society. What? You mean the lord of the manor is equal to the, to the, uh, the, the milkmaid? Oh, how absurd. That's how our, our conservative friends talk. Oh no, hierarchy's good. There are top people and there are bottom people and let's leave it that way. And, and, and democracy says no. See, it's not because democracy makes good decisions that I'm in favor of it. Uh, if democracy is taken over by populists, as it has been in my country and yours, um, then they're going to make bad decisions. That's the old expression for this, is the tyranny of the majority. Um, and that can be just terrible. But, but what's good about democracy is that if a person has a vote, she feels that she is honored and dignified. Or to express it more sharply, if she doesn't have a vote, if, no, we're not going to give votes to women. Women can't. They're no good. They can't. They're, they're, their husband will take care of them. They, we don't need women to have a vote. They're inferior. See what I mean? That is not how to run things. So you got to put it together. You have to have the honor of voting, which is the main virtue of democracy, and you've got to have the the, the you've got to have the liberty of liberalism, and then, very surprisingly, you get freedom, 
that's not so surprising, but you also get rich. And this was a surprise to the early liberals. They were in favor of liberty, and then they were worried about democracy, but okay, but mainly li li liberty for itself, just because it's a good thing for humans to be treated as free. But then, remarkably, it resulted in people having a go and resulted in innovation. Little innovations, big innovations, and it made us all rich. In 1800, Brazilian income per head in modern prices was, I don't know, one or two dollars a day. Imagine trying to get along in, in Sao Paulo on one or two dollars a day. It's not a nice way to live. Now it's about $33 a day. And that's a tremendous improvement. And if you but adopt <laughs> the liberal principles that even the, the terrible authoritarian Chinese have adopted and the democratic Indians have adopted, you can have $100 a day. Essa foi a segunda parte da nossa série especial entrevistando Deidre McCloskey. Ela é uma das maiores pensadoras do liberalismo na atualidade em qualquer parte desse planeta. Se você gostou da conversa, deixe o seu like, compartilhe com seus amigos, se inscreva no canal também, a gente vai continuar publicando os próximos capítulos da série, independentemente disso, de segunda a sexta-feira, a gente traz para você sempre um vídeo novo com os principais destaques do dia para quem defende a liberdade por inteiro. Obrigado e até amanhã.